Hello, Islandwood, and welcome back to another Socially Safe Phonology Friday. My name is Paul Pagani, and with me today on camera is my wife, Sharon. We are both Islandwood docents, but today we find ourselves at the very northern tip of the Kitsap Peninsula in a beautiful place called Foulweather Bluff. Foulweather Bluff is a 100-acre nature conservancy preserve that preserves forest, marsh, and about 3,800 feet of sandy beach. Most of the forest you're going to find here is pretty much second growth with a lot of Arbutus in there because this is also in the rain shadow of the Olympic Mountains. But when you get to the marsh and you're scanning along the beach, it really can take you back mentally to the years when our native tribes owned and managed this beautiful piece of land. In terms of the water, the water here is where Admiralty Inlet splits off to the east over into Hood Canal and then to the west over into the main trough of Puget Sound. But you know, with phonology, we tend to think of phonology as on the land. However, the ocean also has its own sense of phonology, and really that's tied to the top. You know, this time of year when the weather's nice in the spring and in the summer, our low tides are always during the day. As a result, we can be out exploring the incredible creatures here at the beach. In the winter, it's just the opposite. The best low tides are in late December in the middle of the night. So that subtle phonology gives us a way of exploring the beach during these great daytime low tides. Well, you know, everybody who loves beach exploring typically has a favorite sea creature. For me, it's all of the members of the echinoderm family. Now today, here at Foulweather Bluff, we're going to be taking a look at one of those sea creatures, and those are sand dollars. You know, here at the bluff, there's a depression in the sand that allows the water to flow in at such a uh, rate that's perfect for these guys. You know, I grew up down in the deserts of Arizona and spent my life there. And I always thought that a sand dollar was a light-colored guy like this that you might find at the beach at San Diego if you were lucky. I was amazed to learn that sand dollars are a complete animal, not just an empty shell like this, and that they are covered with thousands and thousands of these dark colored spines. Now, as you see, the spines are moving here because the spines do a couple of things for these sand dollars. First thing it does, the spines trap the plankton, and the algae that comes in with each high tide. They then act as sort of little assembly lines to carry that food to the center hole of the sand dollar, which is where he takes in his food. The second thing that the spines do for the sand dollar is they give it a sense of transportation. If a predator comes around, sand dollars can quickly use those spines to burrow deep into the sand to escape predation. In fact, interestingly, one of their biggest predators is also one of their cousins. And that cousin is the spiny pink sea star. Oftentimes, in a big patch of sand dollars like this, you'll notice that as a pink spiny comes through, there will be a smooth swath of sand where the sand dollars have all tucked underneath the surface. But you know, when you look at this patch of sand dollars that we have here, you can see that sand dollars really are not very good at social distancing because when they congregate, they get in groups of up to 630 
per square yard. They like to stack on top of each other. They like to stack next to each other. And they angle themselves at about eh, somewhere between a 45 to 90 degree angle. And when the tide comes in, it delivers their dinner. So while they might not be very good at social distancing, they are pretty good at following stay-at-home orders so that they're not really going anywhere and they let their dinner be delivered to them. So as we get into this time of year, I would really encourage you to get out to the beaches, enjoy all of the great tidal life that we can see this time of year at our low tides. And if you see something great, send it to hashtag Phenology Friday. And if nothing else, we'll see you back here next Friday for our next installment. Have a great day.